Today we're going to take up Psalm 111, 112, and 113 together. Uh, the reason why I'm going to do that is because they're sort of connected and uh, sort of a triplet. And uh, each one is a hallelujah song. Each begins with the expression, praise ye the Lord. And so there's an emphasis on the praise to God, uh, praise to Jehovah in these three Psalms. Uh, as far as the interpretation goes, um, they follow, obviously they follow Psalm 110, but <clears throat> they follow Psalm 110 uh, prophetically. In Psalm 110, we saw uh, the Lord Jesus as presently seated at the right hand of God, but then we saw also his second coming when he would smite the heads of the nations and he would be the priestly king reigning over the earth and uh, the nations sub being subdued unto him. <clears throat> Now, in these three Psalms, Psalm 111, 112, and 113, we get uh, his millennial reign in which the earth brings forth praise unto the Lord. Now, th th there is this celebration of Jehovah, but there's a slight uh, difference of emphasis in each of the Psalms. Psalm 111, uh, Jehovah's works and ways are celebrated. Uh, in uh, Psalm 112, uh, it's a celebration of his blessing uh, towards his people. And then the Psalm 113 is a celebration of his name or, and the glory of his name. Now, uh, there's a striking feature that we find uh, in Psalm 111 and 112. It's not in 113. And that is that uh, Psalm 111 and 112 are what are, are called acrostic psalms. That is, uh, each of the stanzas in the psalm start with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and there's 22 stanzas. Now, there's a different number of verses in our Psalms, just the way they're arranged, but in actual fact, uh, there's 22 stanzas, each with a, a successive letter. It's not a random uh, arrangement of the uh, Hebrew alphabet, but it's a, a successive uh, uh, arrangement of each letter of the Hebrew alphabet and therefore an acrostic. And so in this Psalm, uh, 111, it celebrates the Lord's works and his ways. For example, verse two, the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Verse three, his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endureth forever. Verse four, he hath made his wonderful works to, remember, to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. And so that's the general trend of, of Psalm 111, a celebration of his works. And also uh, uh, the emphasis, too, when it comes to his works is on redemption. That is the, the deliverance of his people. It says in verse 9, he sent redemption unto his people. He commanded his covenant forever, holy and reverent or awesome is his name. And so uh, we see his redemption brought out here and, and the glory and praise due to his name because of the, of the redemption of his people. Now, he redeemed people from Egypt, his people Israel, but he's going to redeem them in a future day from the, their enemies. You know, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they were discouraged and depressed because they thought it had been he that should uh, redeem his people. Uh, but they didn't realize that the Lord had to suffer and die to do that. They were thinking of the kingdom, but there's another redemption also, and that's redemption of our souls. Uh, salvation and everyone who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, has been redeemed his soul has been redeemed uh, that's a present uh, a present fact and we're waiting for the redemption of our body see redemption is is an aspect of salvation that we're we're delivered by power we're brought out of one position into another uh, that we're delivered from the power of the enemy or that which was against us and purchased back uh, to God. So Psalm 112, uh, there uh, the emphasis we saw was uh, celebrating his blessing, the blessing of his people. And um, there's some uh, verses in the psalm that would suggest uh, what uh, pr the prosperity of his people on the earth. For example, uh, let's see, look at verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness shall endure forever. Under the upright arises light in the darkness, and so on. Uh, verse 5, a good man shows favor and lends, and he will uh, guide his affairs with discretion, 
and so on. Like the, 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 the righteous man will be blessed in his affairs and, and wealth will come to his house. Now, <clears throat> there's a general principle there uh, that's true, but this is specifically Jewish in its context. Um, we have to be careful what's known as the prosperity gospel. Uh, just because one receives Christ as a savior does not necessarily doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be wealthy or rich. That's not part of the gospel. Now the Lord may bless you, may bless you for your faithfulness and all that. I, I don't deny that. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He that sows uh, much will gain much. I mean, there are general principles, but we have to be careful to not to morph these things into the gospel. Okay, the gospel isn't about uh, prosperity or wealth in this world at all. And then <clears throat> we get in verse 7 of uh, Psalm 112. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, or as the English Standard Version translated, he will not be afraid of bad news. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You know, we, we understand that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to purpose. Not that all things are good, but all things work uh, together uh, for good. And then <clears throat> Psalm 113, uh, we get uh, the celebration of Jehovah's name. Verse 2 says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? You know, the Lord Jesus will still be reigning from the heaven, the heavens, and the church will be reigning there with him. He will be Melchizedek. Uh, priest of the Most High God, God, possessor of heaven and earth. The, the heavens will be millennial and the earth will be millennial. He'll reign from heaven and over the earth. But in the heavens, his reign will be in connection with the church. On the earth, his reign will be in connection with the people of Israel. And all the earth will bring forth praise unto the Lord. Now, tomorrow, uh, it not, may not be so when you listen to this, but for me, tomorrow is the Lord's Day. And the Christians will come together and all over the world people will be offering praise unto the Lord. So even before that day, we have the privilege to praise the Lord and give thanks for his redemption, his wonderful works, and give glory to his name. Now, Psalm 113 ends interest in an interesting way because it's essentially the very same words as we get in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, the prayer of Hannah. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him among princes, even the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman to keep house and the joyful mother of children, to be the joyful mother of children. This is essentially the prayer of Hannah in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 2 and is highly Jewish again in nature. But may the Lord encourage you today as we uh, continue on for the Lord and may you find that you are giving praise to the Lord even now before that day. And if you know redemption, the redemption of your soul, uh, you have something to give thanks for and to give glory to the Lord for as we await the redemption of our body. May the Lord bless you.